Welcome back, everybody, to the 2023 Derby City Classic. This is the One Pocket Division, and it's a barn burner. We have Mishko Fortunski versus Vitaly Patsura. Vitaly has a loss. He is uh, He's not as ex experienced in the game. He's trying to learn the game, but he's very fresh into it. Uh, do us a quick favor. Like and subscribe Railbirds TV on YouTube. Go ahead and go to our like and subscribe. They're doing a lot for pool, trying to get this content out to you. And it's great to have a secondary stream at the Derby City Classic. Now let's speak a little bit about Mishko. Mishko's lost the lag, but I will tell you that he is a powerhouse. He does understand the game um, to, to a minimum, but a guy at his level that understands the simplicity of the game can be deadly. Uh, kind of like Scott or Woodward was a year, year and a half ago. This is your host, Scott Frost, a.k.a. The Freezer. Let's sit back and enjoy. Okay, broken pretty good. But the problem is he's got that he's got nothing threatening the right side. That's the issue. So Fortunski's probably forced to go to the one. I think that I think that that's really what he can do. He can go to the one. I don't mind leaving the cue ball just below the one. I think that I think that. The only problem is he wants to control the speed of the one. He doesn't want it to come back and leave Vitaly a bank. So he's controlled the speed of the one, but he's brought the cue ball down a little low. That's the only concern about that shot. If you notice and leave... I think he's can I think he can cross this 14 into the 5 and 13 playing the cue ball one rail to the left side of the table up behind the 8 up to that side rail he's just really got to control the speed here he does have a bank on the one which I didn't expect he could three rail the cue ball I think it's too hap early in the match the 14's definitely the shot Gonna use. Uh, he's looking to bank this ball. I guess this is ultra aggressive. I like the 14, but he's gonna bank at this ball. It's okay. Yeah, it's okay. A really nice cue ball. Typically, you don't want to play the cue ball back on the back side of the stack like that when you have a chance to cover him up behind the eight and get something really close and maybe even make the 13 with banking the 14. But this is, I mean, it's quite containing. It's not terrible. I just feel like there's an easier way out of this versus what he could have done. Not great. Another rotation on the cue ball, and it is great. So Vitaly can go all out on the 6, 5, 13, but it looks like the 13 is going a bit high. It's the only concern there, and you've got to protect against the 8. So I think you've got to level down on this and, and draw your cue ball up to the side rail. Yeah, this is hit well. So this is what he could have done the inning prior, but it's worked out for him. Mishko is in a bit of trouble now. Everything has worked out in Vitaly's favor. He's in really big trouble. Notice the eights got Mishko pretty much covered on everything. What I am looking at is your top right side of the table, right? If you left him in that top right corner pocket, however you can do it, whether you take a foul or not, force him to take an off-angle combo on the 15 and the stripe by the corner. The, the, the good thing about forcing him to take that 
combination on which he might even pass up is that the 14 is going to come to Mishko's pocket, come that direction. So it's not without risk. It's just an option. But you're going to need to do something. Man, I don't know. I don't see what this is. Ah, I gotta admit, I, I can't fault him for shooting that. It was an uh, an escape attack, basically. And if he if he does pocket it, he can escape and get out of the bad position. So Vitali could be off to the races, and I think the 14 passes the 15. And if it does, you play the 14-11 combination or the 14-13 combination. And that carries your position to the five and six. problem you can shoot the 15 13 combination and draw back the 14 just lays more naturally he's looking to see if it passes now if it does pass he will shoot it if it doesn't pass he's going to draw the the 15 uh, 13 yeah nicely done I believe he can get to the five without any troubles here. So he's going to play. He's going to play the five fourteen combination. The five will hold for position. He's got to be careful here. Really be conscious of what you're going to do. I actually like. I like going in between the 6 and 15, and if you catch a piece of the 6, it's okay. You're going to get a shot on the 15 here. He might, being a 9-ball player, draw all the way out of this, which I think is a little tougher. You want to try and keep things simple. Yeah, risk the hazard of a miscue or something like that. I do note that the 8 goes as well. But I think with just a touch of left English, middle to high left, you could come one rail between those balls. It looks pretty natural. He did draw out. He did great. That's a that's a rotation player for you. This is what you don't want to leave nine ball or ten ball players is is an open table, and I, that's what's going to happen with both of these guys. I think Mishko knows the game a little bit better. Matter of fact, I know he does. He's going to have to come two rails now. Playing for four. So he's, he's got an option. He can come one rail above these balls or two rails below them. I like the two rail option. So does he. He's hit it very well. I mean very well. Like perfect. He's gotten the most out of this. It's going to come through. You just want to you want to make heavy contact on this stack here. Well done. He's playing for two, and they are there. The twelve and eleven just drop one to two rails below the eleven. Vitali to take the quick first game in game number one. It looks like that's what he's going to do. Eight and out. And once again, I can't fault Mishko for shooting the 9. I really can't. He was in a really bad spot. So if he drops the 9, if he drops the 9, then he's then he's got a chance to escape. But he hangs the 9. Vitaly comes with a great 8 and out. And one to nothing, Vitaly Patsura. Talking about both of these players, I've gotten the opportunity to know Vitaly a little bit better. 
such a great person running mate with Fedor Gorst. He's also in the same stable as Alan Sword and Jason Sword. They've got the stable with Fedor, Alan, and Kristen. And then talking about Mishko. What a break, by the way. Notice high and low, right? You've got the stripe low. You've got the, the solid high being five ball. And I talk about this a lot. This, this isn't an option this time, uh, but there is always the foul because of those balls doubled up in the top right corner pocket. Not ever saying that's the shot, but there's a time where it's warranted. This is not where it's warranted because of the 2-8 combination. He's looking to bring the cue ball probably down into the 8 here. If you come low, I think it's dangerous. But I don't like him drawing, and I don't know... Well, it's turned out like like Efren Reyes shot it. So he's done very well there. Immediately, I see really one thing, and that's clipping the five. But I don't know what the, the six... No, I don't think the six is wired. So I think you've just got to clip off this five and get him up table. Well, I know Vitaly hasn't shown that he doesn't know the game. Um, and yes, he's, he's a, you know, a world-class player. So obviously the, the more elementary moving is going to be okay for him. I just know that he's been wanting to learn the game. I've, I've played a little bit with him and, and he just doesn't understand a lot of it. I don't know if that's going to show in this match. Mishko is not super seasoned either. I don't know if he can see the left-hand side of this five. If he can, he could cross the five towards his pocket and go up into the back side of the one, which would be really nice. It's a common one-pocket shot that we like to shoot. Even if you had to hit the five fuller and cross it into the 14, you can play your cue ball one rail up into the back side of the one. Even if missing the one and catch the eight, you should be okay talking about the cue ball but it seems as he might be a little flat or a little straight he might not be able to see enough of the five the way his body is speaking to me looking at other options I mean, he could bank at the seven and swing his cue ball three rails behind the five He's kicking at this five. Boy, it takes an accurate hit, but if executed well, I think he's okay. Now he's going into it. Now he's kicking. He's adjusted back to kicking. Oh, excuse me. He's going into it. He's just hitting the thin side of it. Pretty well done from where he was at. This is where Mishko's got to take advantage. At very minimum, come off the 5 and put him behind the 6 and 12. At minimum, if you can do more than that, I have no problem with it. But it's not a time to attack. This is just not the time to attack. He's got to position some balls and, and protect the cue ball at the moment. You're only down 1 to nothing. Yes, this is only a race to 3, but it's still early. And these guys, trust me, are, are thinking attack all the time. And really, that's the way the game is played now. The first player to the first shot is typically the one who's going to win that game. He's wanting to do something. with it. You notice you could come off the five here, guys, and put him behind the pile. So that's a lack of experience there, and I'm a little bit surprised. I kind of spoke... Spoke pretty highly on, on Mishko. I don't know that Vitaly sees the six ball yet. Does he not see the six ball yet? Hey, Vitaly, the six ball's right there. Okay. He sees the six. Now, I don't know that he can miss the 13. Therefore, if he can't miss the 13, and I think he's too steep to be able to... 
he might be able to draw to the top side of the 13 and get a shot on the 9. But if he can't, if he is too steep and has to go into the 13 fold, you want to hit it with speed, hopefully sending the 9 back over to your side of the table. He's got the extension out. He can dig into it more. Boy, it looks to me like he's going into this real full if you draw it. Oh, he could he could clip underneath. Very well done. Not only that, recognize what he's done with the 1, 8, and 9. They all play now. If he can get on this 14 with, a, with an angle, this could be another quick 8 and out. Which couple of uh, defensive decisions on Mishko's part early in the game that I think are concerning. Oh, that was a shot there. He's up on the stroke. No. Right the last stroke, and that's what was the drop in the cue ball versus any type of rotation. Boy, you want to be careful going up where he just had his cue. He's looking to bank the five. But the problem here is you could leave some type of a return bank because the five doesn't go. Is he looking to stick? Yeah, I'm, I'm not a big fan there. He kind of just gave up his position completely. Tough to keep the speed right get the ball close with the where the 14 was and hold your cue ball and you really don't want this guy shooting either they're both powerhouses but I love I love Mishko's stroke he's just such a loose and fluid left-handed player and he's a uh, he's struggling at the moment Mishko was touted at one point as probably being one of the best players to ever come out of Poland. You've got Yusishian, Conrad Yusishian. Well, you, you, you've got a, a bunch of guys coming out of Poland now, and the scary part is that there's a whole nother era that'll be coming up out of Poland. So you're going to have top world-class players from Poland for years to come. Looking to go into the 12, maybe banking it into the 14 and stunning the cue ball forward. It's okay because of where the 5 is at. It's going to cut off any cross corners. At least that's what I'm looking at. I think he can bank the 12 into the 14 and stun down. Now he's looking at the 7, using the 12 as protection. This is dangerous. The 7 could ricochet off the 2 and 8 and open everything up for Mishko if he hits it too thin. Still dangerous. And he's going to lose position here. He's definitely given Mishko a whack at the 12 or 7. I almost like the 12. To be honest, I, I initially liked the 7, playing at two rails b below the 5, sending everything your way. But the problem is you can't protect the cue ball. So, see, he doesn't look like he's going to hit this with speed. I would have hit that with speed. I would have hit it a little fuller with speed and stunned over to the rail and tried to push... A lot more to my side. He's done okay with it. At worst, Vitaly can kick at the 10. Or 14. Not sure exactly which ball that is. The nearest stripe to the lower right corner. Kind of thinking right now that might be all he has. He could come off the 5 and, and swing the cue ball two rails below those two stripes. That actually looks pretty good too. You could pin him behind those two balls. If he came off the top of the five, it looks like he's got the perfect angle to do so. This could be a little bit dangerous.
Oh, no. I don't know about that. I thought he was swerving and, and kicking. I think Mishko will cut at this ball. Unless he can't get at it. He's left-handed, so... Vitaly possibly was aware of that. Yeah, I think it's... I think it's just in that awkward position. I know he would cut at that if he can get at it well. Can he bank the 8 through the 15 in that stripe and send a cue ball up table? Looks tough. Yeah, this is okay if it gets there. Even if it doesn't get there, it's okay. That's something uh, we can all take note of is don't panic. When you're playing a passive shot and you're really just trying to hold your position and you do not get a rail, it's, it's not time to panic. You lose a ball, but you're still holding position, right? So th there's no panic necessary. A lot of players, especially amateurs, will get it in their mind that they've just gone backwards 25 balls. It's not the case. Just continue to hold your position. Boy, he's done this again. He's not seen the kick, but he executes so well that it's worked out. Oh, what a shot by Vitaly. He is in the one-pocket zone. Mishko immediately looking to clip and go up table. I'm assuming the seven doesn't pass the three. I would consider taking another foul here versus clipping this ball and leaving him a, a, a way to probably easily get out of this position. Yeah. It's okay, but it's not world class because I just I'm just concerned that Vitaly's going to find something. Note, notice that Mishko's tied up the 1 and 8 now as well. So he really can't get to anything. I still keep thinking Vitaly's going to kick, but he keeps clipping off a ball and doing well. The problem with that is, is if you don't get him behind the 10 or the 12 and let Mishko see the 5, it could be the game. So these types of shots are very touchy. He's done well so far. And this is the problem. And I, I'm not saying he's right or wrong. He executed that poorly, caught it too thin. I'm sure he could have done better with it. But you're, you're working with a lot of distance and you're trying to hit an accurate, accurate point on the object ball. Anything can happen when you're doing that. Mishko's probably immediately going to look at the 2-1 combination. Knowing Mishko, he's an aggressive talent. And when he gets to run on the balls, start the timer because it's going gonna, it's gonna to go quick. So he's immediately looking at, he's immediately, yeah, he's playing the combination, the 2-1. It looks like it lays really nicely, too, to drop down. Well, I thought instead of drawing that ball, I thought you would just punch down into the 8, guaranteeing yourself a shot on the 12 at worst. He doesn't even want to take the stripe out by Vitaly's pocket. He's ready to go. This is dangerous. Yeah, it's real dangerous now. He will not be thrilled with that. He could have two-railed the 15 out. I get that he felt like he was a favorite to make that. But he got a pretty unfortunate rub. So things not going... Mishko's way at the moment. 
and I knew this ball was coming around the world. He's trying to contain him on the 15. It might just get worse for him. Mishko, that is. Spotting the ball he owes. One ball apiece. Vitali takes a one nothing lead in this race to three. I am your host, Scott Frost, a.k.a. The Freezer. And we are watching two aggressive giants. He's immediately wanting to do something with the seven, but is the three, can you cut the three to the side rail and put him behind the 11? That would be devastation. You want to make sure you protect against the 10, 11, or the 10 and 9. Yeah, this isn't going to do it. When you don't play a lot of one pocket, and that's really going to hurt his position, it might cost him the game. This ball might bank in off the off the 12, but when you don't play a lot of the game, those touchier shots, as I was mentioning prior, to where you're trying to get right behind one ball, even when you do play the game on one pocket, it, it, it's very difficult. You're asking a lot of yourself. So here he could go up to the center of the table, but it looks like he's more concerned about drawing his cue ball, which caused this. If you just flatten out, use a straight high, the cue ball is going to kind of bend up to the center diamond up table. Instead, he hit this so thin and drew it that it just went one rail over to here. Yeah, a little, uh, little lack of experience. Vitaly is immediately looking to attack. What's he attacking on? The 218 dropping down below the 12. Uh, he's, he's, he's let up again. I didn't know Vitaly had that in his stroke, and it could just be a thing, a one pocket thing. This isn't terrible either because everything is threatening Vitaly's pocket now. You better be real careful here. Uh uh. That's going to hurt, I think. Yeah, I don't know if he can cross that lower stripe without dangerous repercussions. Yeah, he's done okay. I don't. I mean, I, I think a, a, a one pocket player can cross that stripe, like Alex Pagulain or Chohan. They could cr cross that 12 or whatever ball that is on the lower rail and go into the 10 with maximum inside English. Matter of fact, I'm almost positive you can. I just don't know if he knows the shot. Looks like he's looking at it. But I've been fooled, and I am being fooled. I don't know what he's looking at here. Two rail in the 12. Stunning forward. Yeah. Well, he's he's left an attacking shot. If, if Mishka wants to take the risk, I don't think it's time, personally. I think you've got to play the 8 off the bottom of the 3 and stun up. Or... You, The reason the eight off the bottom of three, you're not really trying to make anything, but you're protecting everything by stunning up a little bit. So let's say you just stun B11 and 7 if the shot's available. Uh, you really kind of cut Vitaly off from anything aggressive. And you could probably get the eight moving something towards your pocket. He's, you know, he looks like he's thinning off of something here. Okay, he did shoot it. Nicely done. A little unfortunate that he's allowed Mishko to see the 10. I guess he didn't stun enough. I was talking about holding the cue ball right there by the 11. Instead, he went forward 
maybe obviously just a little lack of experience he's done but if you stun right there you cut him off from everything so that's an example Vitaly definitely going at the 10 here just trying to figure out how he wants to go he's gonna he doesn't really have an angle to drop below the 8 I don't think he might have the angle to spin forward below the 8 but if you don't Yeah, he's drawn it, so it doesn't. But be careful for leaving some type of a return bank. He's let up again. He's hit it well, but he's let up a little bit. I think Mishko can actually pocket that stripe. Quite quite well controlled by Vitaly, to be honest with you. He, he probably played to let up a little bit like that. He, the speed turned out very nice. Well, I feel like he can rail first and pocket that stripe, but maybe not. He's going at the nine. He's just playing the cue ball, right? Yeah, he's just playing the cue ball. Hit it. If he hits it, well. Because I'm sure he wasn't trying to make it. He was more so trying to get the cue ball on that side rail. Let's take a look at what Vitaly has. Immediately, I see coming off the five and snugging him up behind the eight would put Mishko in a world of trouble. Vitaly wants to shoot opposite handed now and pocket this stripe. Uh, not the best result. Not the best result. I don't know that he had to shoot that shot. Unless he was guaranteed position. Does the one play? If the one plays, he might have a free play, but uh, it still looks like he could sell the eight out. I'm sure he's not going to shoot it unless he feels he can get behind the eight here. Just watch out for selling that cue ball at one rail. I bet he plays this thin. Oh, well, he played it thick. Well, he's contained it very nice. So it's all it's been all Pat Sura this match so far. It's been all Vitali. Which has kind of surprised me. I, I, if I were uh, a gambling man, I would have probably laid some type of price and taken Mishko. Trying to look at what he's got. He's almost forced to come off the five or kick one rail. Three's kind of impeding the one rail path. So he might have to even spin it a little bit. And the eight's got him kind of covered on that left hand spin as you see. So he's got some some trouble to uh, to contest. You know, you notice the top right corner, right, of your screen. You could take a foul. I know he's not going to do this, but you could take a foul up there by that furthest diamond all the way up in the top right corner. Leave him doubled up on the 4 and 11. Kind of a good shot, actually, because of where the 8 and 10 are. Those The 8 and 10 are playable. Force Vitaly to maybe come off of the five or rip the eight, but you could gain some position or get out of this spot by taking that foul. I wouldn't be concerned about Vitaly shooting the 13 1 11, so I would assume he might go at the five somehow, but if he catches the 10 or eight, he could sell out. I like taking the foul up in the top right corner here, <clears throat> just because of where the eight and 10 lay.
Yeah, this is really touchy. Watch the scratch. This could be perfect. Well, I take everything back. What a hit. What a hit, Mishko. This hit here could win him the game. Because believe me, that eight's playable from pretty much anywhere. I think Patsura has to do the same thing. Except he can take the two rail angle on, which is probably going to make the ball a lot bigger. Uh, come two rails towards the back of the eight. Uh, I think it's dangerous to bank at this. I, be, I bet Mishko attacks if he banks at this. He better knock it down. Yeah, this is this is going to be trouble. I would be shocked if Mishko doesn't shoot the combination. He's not even looking at it. Oh, he's looking at it. Yeah, that eight's a big ball. And it carries position. Like, you can go one rail straight up into the one and seven. Hopefully not clipping the five. I mean, you could just go straight into the five as well. It might open the one-seven combination up. So there's nothing wrong with just going into the five and really controlling the shot. Pinch it with a touch of inside center ball. Don't have to do a lot with the cue ball here. It's naturally going up. Huge favor to make this. Oh, wow. He, he knows he, he let the cat out of the bag there. I mean, he was a heavy, heavy favorite to make that combination. He actually hit it pretty poorly. Mishko might be fatigued or jet lagged. Not really sure. But he doesn't seem himself. And uh, Vitaly is off to the races. You don't want this guy shooting at his hole. And what a nice guy he is. He's earned the nickname The Driver. Nobody knows why, but he is The Driver. That's what the Sword Brothers have named him. He's going to draw this cue ball back. He might even be trying to make the ball that's hanging. I don't think that's necessary because you're going to get on the rail. I didn't like that decision at all. I did not like that decision. I felt like he was trying to do too much. Is he looking to cut the two? Well, that's dangerous. Vitaly playing for four. Mishko's not out of this game. If he misses this ball, Mishko's got an opportunity to win it. Let's see how he hits it. Well, never a doubt. He's hit it perfect. Look at the cue ball. Man, this is why these rotation players are so dangerous playing the game. They run the balls like the best one-pocket players in the world, and they shoot shots that are unconventional because they don't know the game as well. Therefore, you're dodging bullets every game playing guys like this because they don't know any better. What a hit. Playing for two. Doesn't want to get flat. He's gotten a little flat. Actually, he's kind of got that wrong angle. I don't know if he has the angle to punch down enough or not. He might have to come out two rails. Okay, he's punching. So he does have enough. Oh, he's gotten the most out of that as well. Looked like Fedor Gorst right there. Wasn't as easy as it looked. Playing for one and a two to nothing lead in what I would call a little bit of an upset so far. I just know that Mishko's played a lot more of the game. Vitaly hasn't been in the States much, and he doesn't run around playing one pocket. Neither does Mishko, but I am your host, the freezer, Scott Frost. Thank you again to Railroads TV for bringing us this great match, allowing me the opportunity to sit in with you guys. I really enjoy commentating two young talents like these two. 
Mishko to break. Excuse me, Vitaly to break. Mishko's got his work cut out for him. In a race to three, you can come back. But it starts with one good shot. And we just haven't seen that from Mishko yet. Oh, this break looks a little bit better. Needs it to slow down. I think he's left the five. Yeah, he's left the five ball. Uh-oh. This is uh this is just uncharacteristic of of Mishko. Seems completely off. Since the beginning he seemed completely off, and I know Vitali is gonna take advantage because he senses blood in the water. So, he's got, I like coming all the way around here. You could actually come all the way around for the 4 if you wanted, but you can come around for the 11 and 14. Well, he's chosen to come all the way around, that's for sure. I didn't, I didn't feel like he had to overhit it that much. I don't think he did either. Because now he's kind of got a bad angle. He, he might be able to cheat the pocket and hold right there. Oh, he's hit the he's hit it perfectly. What a stroke. And you guys can see the shot making ability from Vitali and how pure his stroke is when he goes through the ball. And what a nice uh, young man he is. He's very, very pleasant guy. Doesn't really speak much English, but he understands quite a bit of it. Looking to go in. Is he looking to go into the three? Oh, even better. Even better. Drops into the seven. Opens everything up. Well, this could be a quick one. It looks like it's going to be a quick one. Vitaly playing for five. And they are there. Yeah, now be conscious of the fact that you're play, what you're playing for, playing for four. Okay, I understand you can just come one rail up and probably drop over for the nine. I just like to see him take a, a fraction more time right there to make sure that that's what he wants to do. Playing for three. And this match, guys, has been all Vitaly, and, and deservingly so. He's taken advantage of pretty much every single mistake that Mishko's made. Mishko hasn't made a ton of mistakes. He's made more like th one big mistake per game, and it's cost him. Coming over for the nine, or is he holding? Yeah, he's got to come over for the nine. Playing for one. You see, a one pocket player might even cut the seven because it's going to be for sure free. But not this guy. Wow, what a blitz. Three to nothing. Vitaly Patsura takes Mishko Fortunsky down. That'll be the first loss for Mishko. And uh, I am your host, Scott Frost, the Freezer. Thank you for tuning in. We hope everybody enjoyed. Look forward to the next one. Have a good evening.